Hello, brothers and sisters, and anybody listening. Michael Humble, Seeker of Truth for Rapture and Apocalypse, End of Days Timeline, Part 2. Hope you guys are blessed today. Um, short and sweet and to the point today. I want to start out by uh, uh, covering something we've looked at uh, with uh, Lazarus in John 11, where Christ waits so that uh, Lazarus is in the grave four days. Uh, very likely that's significant or a picture of um, a day equals a year and uh, we're four years into the timeline. So in that section he says, Are, don't you know there's 12 hours in the day? Um, We've talked about how that uh, would be the equinox, and that is not accurate. Um, I think our perception is, at least mine was, uh, equinox, 12 hours in the day. But uh, actually, there isn't. It has to do with the crest of the sun. I, we don't need to really get into it, but it's not. It is something called the equilux. And the equilux in the spring happens a few days before um, the equinox. And the equilux in the fall happens a few days after. It depends where you are on the planet as far as what day it uh, lands on. In Israel, which is of course the center point of things, it happens to fall 26th or 27th. On the 26th, there is 12 hours, 1 minute, and 42 seconds of daylight. On the 27th, there's 11 hours, 59 minutes, and 47 seconds, 13 destruction seconds short of exactly 12 hours. And so those uh, are very interesting days, seeing as that's when they're doing their sacrifice with the 70 nations. On the 26th, their meetings from the 25th through the 27th. Found that very intriguing. Okay, uh, we're going to take a look at Ezekiel. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 38. Somebody asked a really good question um, recently regarding uh, something here in Ezekiel. So let's start um, trying to understand uh, who or what is Gog, G-O-G. Um, Ezekiel 38. And the word and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with, all, with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagorma in the north quarters, and all his bands and many people with thee. You know where you see these, a lot of these uh, guys, first time? Is, uh, is in the days of Noah where um, the 70 nations. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them, and after many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people, 
against the mountains of Israel, which I which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. That ascend is rise up. Like a storm is used 13 times. It's a flood. The storm brings a flood. They're both flood or storm of enemies. Gog, uh, when it says north parts, it's not just north, okay? It's north. Gog is not just a man. It's Satan in the face of, as it always has been. And will be after the thousand year reign in Revelation 20. All of a sudden we see Gog again. Wait a minute, he gets buried in Ezekiel 37. How can he be a thousand years later? And it seems, is he a person? Is he a person? Is he Satan? Is he a place? It can be very confusing. Well, Often in the Word of God, a, a, a person's offspring and where they dwell are called by his name. God ch changed Jacob's name to Israel. We don't have any trouble understanding that. It's Israel to this day. Okay, well, it's the same thing. Most of the people we just were listed there, they're people and then the it becomes a place based on the offspring of that person. Well, this even gets a little more complicated because it isn't just a man. God gets Satan in the face of. Okay, so Satan's coming out of the north parts. Him and his angels getting cast out of heaven. That's the iron that we read about in Daniel, uh, in the visions. Daniel 2, I believe. The statue mingle themselves with the seed of men. Interestingly, north part is used 153 times. Now, again, showing duality, we know 153 is 153 big fish. And we're going to come back with our Lord. He comes back with his saints at the end of the age and uh, finishes setting things straight brings judgment on Gog I looked at Strong's 153 just because that uh, found that interesting it's used one time in the Word of God uh, I gotta find it it's Ezra I don't go there very often. 4, verse 23. 4, 23. Now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum, Shimshai, the scribe, and their companions, <laughs> they went up in haste to Jerusalem under the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. That word by force is Strong's number 153. 24a, then ceased the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. When's that work of the true house of God going to cease? Uh, it doesn't completely cease, as we know there's lost sheep in Jacob's trouble, but it is a picture of the beginning of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. God uses Gog to bring judgment on wickedness, beginning Jacob's trouble, the destroyer bringing destruction. 99 sheep are out of here. Thank God. Judgment coming on Israel and the earth. Ezekiel 38.
Should have kept my finger there. <laughs> uh, verse 14. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, thus saith the Lord God. I keep pronouncing it that way because I don't want it to be confusing with God, the one true almighty God creator of heaven and earth, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, thus saith the Lord God, in that day when my people Israel dwell safely, shall thou not know it? That's why as soon as she begins to travail, she gives birth. Isaiah 66. And thou shalt come from the place out of the north parts. Yeah, it's north parts this way too. Directionally, it's also north parts. Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army, and thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. Why is it a cloud? Where's clouds at? There is an enemy, God calls iron, coming. Different than any enemy before. Why? Well, they're just stronger people? Not. <laughs> Not. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. And I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, aren't Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. Verse 19, for in my jealousy and in my the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. And not there only. Let's keep reading. So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall down. Every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God, every man's sword against his brother. That's verse 21. Verse 22, and I will plead, that's bring judgment against him with pestilence, with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. 23 verses long okay oh my gosh verse 19 great shaking in the land 2019 oh yeah big time god sanctifies himself sets himself apart as god a he declared it all through history right here saying what's coming uses Gog to bring judgment and then judges Gog. And we just saw all that in those 23 verses. Let's go into chapter 39. Therefore thou, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, 
and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and I will cause thy arrows to fall to thy right hand. Who do we know that's got a bow? Oh, the rider on the white horse, the first seal, death. He doesn't come making war right away. Made a covenant, Day of Atonement, 2015. That's where we get our four years from Lazarus, four days. Day equals a year prophetically. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel. Thou and all thy bands and all the people that is with thee, I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort to devour the beasts of the field to be devoured. If you see the uh, Revelation 4, or Revelation 19, 18, is, this is what this is referencing. <clears throat> Banquet of the Fowls. By the way, this is not the same thing as the eagles talked about in Matthew 24. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God, and I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute or profane my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come. It is done, saith the Lord God, this is the day whereof I have spoken. <clears throat> it is done in verse 8, is used 75 times. It is when Israel is 75, the earth gets cleansed, 2023. It starts with the Christ coming back with his saints. Battle of Armageddon, the great day of the battle of God Almighty. Then the earth gets cleansed seven months. Seventy-five times. It's, it's amazing. Oh my gosh. Our father is so off the chart cool. Gosh, he just blows me away. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the handstaves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Seven years? What? Well, oh, where does that fit? We're going to see momentarily. If we go to verse 12, we see, so they, <clears throat> sorry, so we see uh, in verse 9, they begin burning the weapons for seven years. Then in verse 12, and seven months shall the house of Israel be burying the dead that they may cleanse the land. So notice the weapons begin being burned before the land begins to get cleansed at least scripturally or order of the verses so um john 22 sorry john 10 our good shepherd the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you do not know him, you can avoid Jacob's trouble. Confess him as your Lord. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. We have a living Lord, not a dead one. And thou shalt be saved. 
John 10, it's the good shepherd. Verse 19, we see a division. There was division among the Jews for these sayings. You going here, you're going into destruction. Then verse 22, which 2022, gathering of the lost sheep, 19, 2019, 22, 2022. No, not every verse in the word of God. Does it apply per picture, pattern, or prophecy to the end times? Then it will almost certainly uh, show the pattern. Verse 22, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Verse 23. Why does that matter? Well, Feast of Dedication is Hanukkah. And uh, Solomon's porch is the porch of judgment. Take a look at 1 Kings 7. 7. It's incredible. It's amazing. 1 Kings 7, verse 7. Then he made a porch for the throne where he might judge, even the porch of judgment, and it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. <laughs> one side of the floor to the other. Uh, that is uh, Strong's number 7172. <laughs> I found that interesting. Um, seven sevens here we have seven trumpets seven bowls okay because the bowls are judgment upon wickedness when the lost sheep are home verse 22 2022 christ stands in solomon's porch on the feast of dedication the porch of judgment okay and thus that judgment coming on the earth we saw he turns In Ezekiel 38, verse 21, so 21, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, set the Lord God every man's sword against his brother. Same thing in uh, Esther, okay? The king doesn't change the decree to kill the Jews. He tells them to fight. Okay, so at the end, Christ does it. He comes with his angels, and they're broken without hand. They're going to be burning weapons come Feast of Dedication 2022. If you remember this chart we looked at, I added this line right here, Feast of Dedication 2022, right after the gathering of the lost sheep, and we go seven years forward. Brings us to 2029. So the earth is cleansed from the dead bodies at the uh, in 2023. And we've looked at that. Tabernacles 2023, Tabernacle of God is with men, New Jerusalem. <clears throat> so seven years, if we use prophetic years of 360, it's 2,520 days. If we use, oops, I could have prepared my notes better, my apologies. If we use 365.25 days, which is a Hebrew year, yeah, it's 2,556.75 days. 25 is 5 times 5, 2 harvests of grace, or 2 harvests of grace, 2, 5. Either way, <clears throat> 56 is grace, man. That's who gets to go. Christ brings grace. 0.75 to Israel 75 in 2023 when the new tabernacle of, or when new Jerusalem the tabernacle of God is with men so 
So, first day of Hanukkah, and is it the first day? Is it the eighth day? Is it the seventh day? I don't know. I We don't have this stuff pinned to a day. And this is one man's opinion on a timeline. Things I see in the Word of God. First day of Hanukkah, 12 19 22. December 19th, 2022. That's interesting. We got a 12, 19, and a 22. <laughs> 2520 days brings us to November 12th, 2029. Seven years burning weapons. There's New Jerusalem, but they're still burning weapons on the earth. That's what it says. 12, 19, 22, plus 2,556.75 days brings us to December 18th, 2029. Either way, it's 2029. I find that interesting because I pondered for a while. We looked at prime numbers. Amazing things God shows just in the prime numbers. Oh, my goodness. Uh... Well, we only got out to number nine, the ninth prime number. So the eighth prime number is 19, new beginning, 2019. The ninth prime number is 23, New Jerusalem. Nine is divine order, New Jerusalem, 2023. Weapons burned, the tenth prime number is 29 couldn't figure that one out till right about now <laughs> i think it's awesomely cool so i've said several times new jerusalem with men feast of tabernacles 2023 but some believe and the word kind of seems to say that uh it's it that's after the thousand year millennial reign how can that be well let's take a look at it i keep saying we're gonna and then i don't so we're doing okay on time here revelation 20 start let's start in verse 6 blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We've talked about why that says first resurrection. Old Testament believers did not have the opportunity to have Christ in them, okay, after the day of Pentecost, and get raised with the 99 sheep, the dead in Christ, it says in Thessalonians 4. Okay, they had the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust. And the resurrection of the just is the harvest of the lost sheep in 2022. And that's why it says first resurrection here. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such thus second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog. Well, we see Gog again at the end of the thousand years. And Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things were rich, which were written in the books according to their works. If you're not saved by grace, by believing in Jesus Christ, taking him as your Lord, 
You're judged on your works. We're all judged on our works. Believers are just found innocent in the blood of the Lamb. We still get rewards for fruit. Verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Not in the book of life, lake of fire. Let's go to uh, 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Okay, so that seems like it, it's at the end of the thousand years. The thing is, the book of Revelation is not always sequential. God covers things topically at times. It's much more sequential than I think we've realized as a whole, the church. Um Chapter 21, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls, complete. Then we know we got to have the earth cleansed for seven months. Then the tabernacle of God is with men. Well, we need to see more than that to uh, draw that conclusion. Verse 21, chapter 21, verse 27. And therein no wise enter in anything that defileth, neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life so when it says they should no in no way enter in enter into new jerusalem into the gates of the city <clears throat> well that suggests that there's someone outside the gate of the city that's making a lie or works and working abomination and for that matter, who is Satan gathering? There's people on the earth. Go to uh, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city, into New Jerusalem. It's chapter 22 of Revelation. For without, outside the gates of the city, New Jerusalem, are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, Whosoever loves and makes a lie. Well, if New Jerusalem comes down after the thousand-year millennial reign, who are these dudes and where'd they come from? It doesn't. It's not sequential here. New Jerusalem comes in 2023 when God remakes the heaven and earth and New Jerusalem descends from heaven. Still guys on the earth. He doesn't wipe every person off the planet. Glory to God. These guys are who Gog, Satan, rallies. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Father, for telling us your plan for making us and allowing us to be a part of it. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon. Hopefully at the banquet.